Hello there folks, hi, welcome to this live how to paint water, how to paint in watercolours uh, this is going to be a, a, a 30 minute watercolour we are live, we are broadcasting live from beautiful sunny Derbyshire here in the UK the sun is shining down on uh, the world of watercolour TV today so welcome to the studio for a live demonstration um, and it's going to be no more than 30 minute painting time on this sheet of watercolour paper so thank you for joining us uh, live and uh, before we start painting folks just want to say if you're new to my channel could you please subscribe there's a, a subscribe button just below if you can't access that if you're watching it on a on a smart TV if you click the up arrow on your TV controller there's like three dots kind of appear and you can you can go there and within that menu is a, a subscribe uh, button. So please do subscribe, it does mean a lot. Um, we currently have around 67,000 subscribers. Trying to get to that 100,000 subscribers. I want to get a YouTube plaque on the wall, which would be wonderful. Um, but that's a long way off. But every single subscription does make a difference. Of course, it's free for you guys to subscribe. Also, you can click the notification bell which will alert you of any up and coming watercolour demos. But we are live here as of the 16th of September. It's currently uh, just gone 4 p.m. here in the UK. And we're going to paint a watercolour um, autumn slash winter painting. That, that's all we need to know at this particular stage. So do stick around. 30 minute painting time. Um, got some big shout outs. Um, you guys are so generous already uh we've got um some super chat donations coming in so a big thank you to the people that have done a super chat donation so joan hall joan hall a big shout out to you there um thank you for your continued su support joan you've donated four dollars and 99 cents thank you joan hall for all your support sadie thompson as well thank you for sadie you have donated five english pounds um, thank you so much um, Sadie, thank you Joan and Lynn Fletcher as well, a big shout out to you Lynn um, for your £4.49 um, super chat donation, thank you so much Joan, Sadie and Lynn. If you want to get a shout out, there's a super chat button at the bottom of the chat, it's that little sort of S sort of dollar sign, it just keeps the paint flowing here in the watercolour uh, studio so do um, pop that on every single penny that you have, have donated over the course of the past few years has all gone back into this channel buying cameras etc so a big thank you to you now what is today all about today is all about 30 minute watercolors but just before we start painting folks and we will be starting very very soon i do want to have a chat about what's coming up this weekend now i'm live here on the 16th of september 2021 and if you're watching me live we do have a live watercolor workshop coming up this sunday you can see the information at the bottom of the screen here it's on sunday the 19th of september and it's a step-by-step -step watercolor tutorial using just three colors and three brushes and the brushes and colors that you need for this tutorial if you'd like to book in and we do have a few spaces let me quickly show you what you need for the workshop that's coming up on Sunday. So not all these colours, you need just a few simple colours for this workshop that's coming up on Sunday. You need a red, a yellow and a blue. Now these of course are going to be primary colours so if you if you want to take part in the virtual workshop, a live workshop coming up on Sunday, natural blue or French ultramarine or cobalt blue, you've got a nice light yellow. This particular one is natural yellow light, but you could use cadmium yellow, you could use aureolin, and a nice red. So three colours for the live workshop that's coming up on Sunday the 19th. In fact, there's a live workshop pretty much every single weekend, folks. Three brushes as well. All you need is three brushes, a large, a medium, and a small brush, okay? So here we've got a size 20, but a 14 or a 16 would do the job. A size 10 and a size 6. Now, of course, if you're watching this workshop at a different time to the 16th, because this 
tutorial will of course be sticking around on the YouTube channel forever. Um, please just head on over to this website that you can see down at the bottom of the screen here or the w's.watercolor.tv there's a link in the description as well and you can book a space for that workshop now if you're interested in having a go having your hand held through a watercolor painting workshop live where you're sat at home chilling out and painting live and you're working along i don't see you but you can see me and it's a great way to work you can do the live chat all this wonderful stuff's coming up um it's just £10. It's a £10 workshop and the subject for this Sunday, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, in fact, if I do this, you can see it a little bit clearer. Uh, Sunday the 19th of September, we are going to paint a beautiful autumnal woodland with flowing stream and people walking through in watercolours. Have a look at the inspirational images. Think of that beautiful autumnal woodland. I'm a big, big fan of painting the autumn scenes. In fact, over my shoulder here, you can see some examples of some autumn paintings that I've done over recent years. The stag in the wood. We've got the beautiful uh, Central Park just here in, in New York as well. So a big fan of the autumn. It's a great way to learn painting, folks. Now, if you can't watch the workshop live because it is on the uh, 19th of September at 10 a.m., please don't worry because, because you can uh, watch it back at any time. The workshop, once you've purchased any of my virtual workshops is yours to keep forever it's yours to keep forever folks and the thing is you can just watch it at your leisure and paint along and you will guaranteed produce a painting with just three colors and three brushes how many people in the chat are taking part folks let me know in the live chat if you are booked into this workshop that's coming up on the 19th or any workshop have you have you taken part in a workshop at any time Okay, starting very soon, folks. Some more shout outs, some more shout outs, some more super chats. You know, people are so generous. Um, Tina Fagan, Tina, again, a continued supporter of mine. Thank you, Tina, for the five euro donation. Big shout out to you, Tina. Thank you for everything you do. Uh, thank you to Rosemary Baldock for a five pound donation. Thank you, Rosemary Baldock. Very much appreciated, of course and Elizabeth Grant, you're all superstars and every penny goes back into this channel in the world of Mr. Palmer watercolour teaching. But that's enough waffle. Again, thank you to Tina, Rosemary and Elizabeth. Let's get stuck into the watercolour painting. It's about bloody time, come on. Wasting my time, yeah? But let's have a look at what materials we're going to use today, shall we? Yeah, here's the paper, folks. We've got a sheet of watercolor paper. This is a quarter imperial sheet of watercolor paper. Um, it's my own brand of paper. All the products are available on Watercolor TV. Check it out. This paper is cotton. It's 140 pound. It's pretty expensive. 140 pound in weight. 300 gram. Not surface. N O T surface. A not surface is a middle grain surface it's a medium grain you get not which means it's not rough and it's not smooth this is not not watercolor paper 140 pound 300 gram is what we're talking about folks that's the paper i've stuck it to a board down here we've got various materials and i don't quite know what i'm going to use but all the materials are available on the website watercolor.tv what i've done is i've got over the past 12 to 14 years, I've kind of developed my own range of watercolour paints. As you can see here, this particular one is called Matthew Palmer's Collection and Natural Grey. Everything's available online at Watercolour TV. If you like anything you see, you can get them, you can get all of them. Natural Grey is a shadow colour. We've got some skin tones. We've got light and dark skin tone here. Okay. Uh, we've got natural orange, we've got natural brown. All the colours are designed for replication of nature. We've got natural green, green light. We've got some natural violet. And we've got other colours. There's, there's 13 colours in the range, all replicating nature. Lots of people say which colours are good for the autumn. Well, if you look at these four colours here, this is what you'd call the foliage collection. You've got your greens, uh, light, you've got your normal green, you've got your brown, you've got your orange. So they're all there for a, for replication of nature. It's my own brand of paints. If you haven't got those colours, and remember, you don't need those for the live workshop that's coming up on Sunday or 
any Sunday in the future. But we've got those here. The brushes I mentioned for the workshop on Sunday, it's just the three here, the standard three, large, medium, and small. But if you want to use something a bit more adventurous um, for this little demo, we've got Matthew's own brand of brushes. And we'll talk about these as we, we, we go through the demo. Remember, we are live. We've got Matthew Palmer Tree and Texture Brushes, Blending Blades. We've got Branch and Detail Brushes. We've got Lift Out Brushes. I'll talk more about these as we... As we go through the picture, we've got some masking tape, some kitchen paper here as well. We are ready to get started. Come on, wasting your time here. Yeah? Um, just very quickly, got a couple more shout outs. More shout outs. Shout out to Andrea Prince, £4.49. Super chat donation. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you for taking time out of your day to watch paint dry, because that's what you're going to be doing. Thanks so much. Thank you to Andrew Mayer for the £2 donation. Again, every cent, every penny goes back into the channel. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, and Andrew Mayer. You stars, you really are. Let's get stuck into this. So if you want a shout out, drop it in the super chat. We'll do it. Okay, first thing to do, folks, is take some masking tape. Long enough to go across the picture. No sketching. Let's remove stickiness. Wipe it from the sweaty brow. It's warm today. And we're going to pop this. And do a pretty speedy picture. Let's do a quick time check. It's almost 20 past four here in the UK. Let's have this coming down here. Drop it in the middle of it. Bit of a change in direction. And then we're going to creep it up on this side. Now I want to paint a bit of a late autumn, early winter scene. Late autumn, early winter is what we're talking about here today. Um, and that's what we're going to do the demo on folks. It will be about 30 minute painting time. You can smell the fear You really can and let's get stuck into that. No sketching. This is a demo. It's pretty quick It's a fast process, but that's all part of the fun brushes wise brushes wise. I'm going to be using This large tree and texture brush, which is one of my own brushes you can see it says Matthew Palmer tree and texture brush large uh, basically, I'm just going to wet the top section of the paper, making sure the tape is stuck down. And I want to focus the effort on the on the top part of the picture. We'll just move the camera here. There's no editing as such. We are cutting live between cameras. Um, so I'm just going to basically wet the page with water. Now, I have stuck this down. I've not stretched the paper, for those people that know what I mean by stretching paper. It's not essential. If you've got a quality paper like this, you don't need to stretch the paper. So there we go. There's the water. We've got a few stray, a few stray pubic hair. Sorry, a few stray hairs on the picture. Just leave them just to blow away in the wind. They'll just fly away. Or hop away because the hairs basically. So plenty of water going on. We're going to paint a late autumn, early winter scene. And it's going to be a, a pretty quick process. It's, it's 20 past four. We want to do all, the whole thing in 30 minutes and we'll see what happens, basically. So speed painting. We're talking about speed painting here, folks. That's the plan. First colour is going to be um, some skin tone. Light skin tone. I'm going to use that first. Mix it into the brush. Beautiful. Light the colour. Let's go in. Let's twist. Let's twist, okay? This is good, isn't it? We work across the centre here, and we're going to work into the sky a little bit. And basically, it's like a, it's like a creamy coloured. Look, look at all these stray hairs we've got off this brush. It's a new brush. It's a new brush. Molten. Get rid of it. Winter season. This brush. Bring it in. Perfect. Can't go wrong, can you? Or oh, a autumn winter vibe so that's skin tone light you can replicate these colors yourself if you haven't got these exact colors but it's not fine. it doesn't really matter to be honest um can't go wrong um back down to the palette folks let's clean that brush really well we've got the kitchen paper to wipe away the tears we're going to use natural violet which is a beautiful beautiful it looks quite blue does natural violet it's got a violet tinge to it it's not a strong violet it's not a strong violet by any means, but it's a beautiful colour. And it's going to mix in across the top with this tree and texture brush. Love it. 
and we'll sort of work it in. I'm sort of swirling the brush here. Now, if you're doing a, a live workshop, like the one that's advertised at the bottom of the screen, I think I might have mentioned that just once or twice. Um, you don't need fancy brushes and you don't need fancy colours, just primary colours. And you will produce a picture. You will guaranteed produce a picture. I'm sure people in the live chat will back me up on that one because there's lots of people, there's lots of names I recognise that have been taking part in these uh, workshops. Hello to Doss is just popping in as well. She's having a wonderful holiday at the minute, I believe. So hello to you. There we go. Brill. Okay. And then once we've done this, we can clean the brush again and we can just sort of gently soften away any harsh bits, any harsh lines. Now we're going to start to do trees. We're going to bring trees into play here, folks. Okay. And that really, when the trees come into play, for me, that is the time when um, the picture really evolves. So do stick with us. Fab. Okay. So let's go for the stronger colours. We're going to go for autumnal colours at this point. I'm going to go for natural orange. Beautiful natural orange. Nice and strong for the paint here. Stipple the brush. Now I'm stippling the brush into the colour. You can see that there. If you look at the brush you can see it's like a 1990s David Beckham. Beautiful orange highlights. There you go. And we're going to go straight in. Working on the top section here is what I'm interested in. We're going to do some autumnal trees and I'm doing gentle taps of this brush. Now I'm using this colour fairly heavy. The paper is borderline dry. It's borderline dry, which is all right. I'm going to work it in. And we're stippling in over the pubic hairs, bring it down. If you've just tuned into this, why is Mr. Palmer talking about pubic hairs? Because he, because he's in a weird mood, and we're going to bring it over. Bring it up. Gentle stipples, gentle taps of the brush. This is the largest one on the tree brush. There is actually four different sizes. Um, this one is just called large tree and texture brush. Mr. Palmer, tree and texture brush. There it is. I love how you can create those simple trees instantly. Autumn's on its way. Beautiful. And I am just using natural orange. Now, if you've not got natural orange, why not? You can mix an orange. This one would be very similar to burnt sienna, or as I call it, bont sienna. And a cadmium yellow mix so a similar kind of consistency to that a similar mixture to that reds and yellows obviously make oranges but not as bright as using something like this or even using burnt sienna so paper's damp paint's a bit bleeding which is what you want a bit of bleeding paint and you can see that nice stipple effect that we've created already that's a single tone um autumnal wash imagine it's the woodland that you're looking over towards this beautiful woodland in the distance there let's go darker let's bring some stronger colors into this back to palette we're gonna bring in we're gonna we're gonna bring in some natural brown at this point now natural brown is a nice earthy color there it is simple the wonders of live broadcasting means I can press a button in my mind. That's where it is. And it allows me to do a slow motion version of this. So you can really see me mixing the brush up. Bring it up. Wait for it. There it is, just creeping into view. And then back to normal speed again. So that's how you use the brush. A bit of kitchen paper is good to tap off the excess. Back to the picture. Let's go a little bit darker, not massively darker, but a little bit darker. We're working across the base of the trees. 
I'm mixing the natural brown with the orange, which is a great way of working. And we can be a little bit creative by putting some shadows on one side of the tree. Yeah, but where's your light coming from? Who said that? So you can darken one side. Yeah, but where's your light coming from? Just pop little tiny bits of shadows on, mix it on the paper. You see that you can almost create three dimensional looking trees with this brush and every stick of the brush gives you interesting effects. There's foliage, autumn foliage. There we are. Beautiful. Love how that goes. I'm really nice to see the autumn tones. And again, if you want to do more autumn painting, have a look at the bottom of your screen, folks. This is the date of the workshop that's coming up. I might have mentioned this briefly at the start. 19th of September, folks. We do have a few spaces left for £10. You can paint along at home live virtually. Very steady. Not this pace. This is speed painting. This is definitely speed painting. The workshops are steady, relaxed and... Just give you time to work. You can watch it live or at any time. You don't have to be live. Because obviously different time zones, you know, people kind of busy doing things now. So it's a good way to work in. I've made the colour a bit heavier, folks, because I want to go a bit darker at the bottom of these trees. So we've been working for about nine minutes now, which is good. Let's go a bit darker. Let's go a little bit darker now, folks. So let's bring some grey into play. Now, my grey is called natural grey, which is a mixture of, of the primary colours. OK, so the grey is made from a red, yellow and a blue rather than grey pigment. And I don't want much of this, as you can probably gather, but a little bit would be quite useful, especially at the base of the trees here, because think of the undergrowth. Think of the shadows that you're going to get at the base of a tree where it's at its it's at its darkest. It's at its darkest at the bottom of the tree. If you think about it like that. And we can see that we can just make sure things are nice and definite, nice and strong. It's important that we have darkness because without darkness, there's no lightness. Was that in the Bible? Sounds like it might have been, possibly. Bring it up. Now, I want to put some branches into these trees, okay? Um, and to do that, I want to clean the brush really well and get the kitchen paper and give it a good old squeeze. Soften the brush. And literally, sort of reactivate all this area. So I want to soften it all in a bit. So basically I'm stippling over the top of all this area with a damp brush. Now I've always wondered what a wet badger smells like. Have a sniff. Smell a vision. There you go. So a good stipple. So I'm basically reactivating the colour here. And I can see the light shine. You can see it yourself as well. And the reason for the reactivation of this is one, because it blends the paint together, which is really effective. But mainly, mainly because I'm going to use a special tool, which is a Legoland hotel key card that I probably should have returned to scrape some branches in. So let's go in. And of course, if this was dry, Look at that. That that is satisfying. It's as satisfying as smelling a wet badger brush. Bring it in. I've just got five thumbs down. And listen, likes. We've only got 48 likes. There's 150 people watching live. Come on. Give us a like. Likes make a difference. Likes make a difference. They really do. Let's try and get at least 75 likes, shall we? Scraping out the trees, scratching them off. Think of 
think of silver birch trees as we do this. Now, if you've not got a Legoland Hotel key card, then you might have a Disneyland Hotel key card, or you might have a palette knife, maybe. A palette knife would work. So a few little, little flakes, little scratches. will add a beautiful impression of a woodland. Look how beautiful that comes together there just by removing the colour. Now if you're doing this and you're thinking the paint's not coming off very well because it's too dry, just go back in with a damp brush and reactivate the paint again. It will let you do it quite nicely. Isn't that lovely? Love autumn, love the forest effect we've created here. Um, adding a few branches with the old plastic card you can use fingernails, you can use palette knives for this. Anything goes, really. Quick time check. So we've been painting around sort of 12, 12 minutes. And we've created a woodland in 12 minutes. Beautiful evening sky, gorgeous colours. We've got natural violet, we've got the skin tone light, orange, and of course natural brown. And like I mentioned, folks, all the colours are available on Watercolour TV for those people that like the looks of those and the brushes as well of course you can pick up the brushes too wonderful i'm quite happy with that now this is the bit where people come unstuck so we'll take his time with this one just imagine while you're doing this that you've got a sticky plaster a band-aid whatever you want to call it stuck to your hairs on your arm and you peel it off very gently now if you get seepage down the back it does happen when that gets to a certain age in life but let's just very gently peel that off so it's given us this this kind of landscape with the beautiful autumnal trees yes i'm going to do snow i love painting snow and um, let's say that it's late autumn early winter i mean i think that some people have this stereotype in mind that you know you've got autumn has got to be autumn colors you know but it can snow somewhere in the world in October and November. So why not chuck a bit of snow on? And it's good to learn about shadows is snow. And it is one of my favourite subjects. So let's work on the bottom section. And for this, for this, we're going to be using these blending blades, which are my sort of everyday brushes for creating nice blending tones. Is large and there's a small one. I want to use the large one here. I'm going to use natural violet just like we used in the sky and we're going to paint in some landscape for the next 15 minutes that's what we've got we've got about 15 minutes left on this one so we want to work his way around this corner here quite nicely stick with me you can smell the fear now why blending blades because the bristle allows you to reactivate the paint even if it was dry and it allows you to do probably the hardest task in painting you can't even see one painting can you there you go i painted a footpath why weren't watching i came around the corner and i'm now using water to blend that color away up into the hillside yeah but where's your light and i will bring some of these shadows going up into this sort of hillside here let's pop a few on like so clean the brush give it a bit of a wipe on kitchen paper and we're going to water that in blend it in a bit all this will become incidental all these shadows in the wintry woodland the wintry landscape i mentioned that we darkened this side of these trees so obviously light is coming through the woods so let's start off with a bit of a shadow coming through here across this edge this is natural violet i'm using here which is it looks quite blue until you actually until it dries and it's got a very gentle purple tinge it is the perfect color for bluebells it's perfect for shadows as well but look at that nice kind of sort of cast shadow effect and again if it's not blended away fully on this side water would allow that to blend in looking good happy with that so far we're going to paint another 
banking over here but really i can't do that until it's dry so i'm going to use a hair dryer and literally this next minute is like watching paint dry so while this is drying off while it's drying off i'm gonna stop the watch we've got 14 minutes 14 minutes to finish this off but while that's drying off i want to show you a little video a montage we've put together which shows you some examples of some of the stuff we've done on these live virtual workshops and this is a great time to book in because we've only got a few spaces left for the workshop on sunday and again if you're watching it at a later stage please do check out the one that's coming up um close to the time that you're watching the video have a look at this I've just used a hair dryer, folks, to give that a bit of a blast. So that's nice and dry. Um, so thank you for taking a couple of minutes out there. And again, you know, if you do want to paint along and do some painting at home yourself, it's on Sunday the 19th. Or there's one coming up pretty much every single weekend. All the information is in the description below. If you've just joined us because the viewing figures have spiked a little bit, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. And again, a big thank you to all the people that have donated via Super Chat. But we are going to continue with this demonstration folks we've got about 14 minutes of painting time left on this one it's nice and dry here we are let's add another side to this again blending blades you don't have to have all this fancy stuff if you don't want to but it's there it's there let's go for the violet again large blending blade it's a special bristle that basically reactivates the color and it makes blending that little bit easier it just it's a hard technique is blending so this kind of helps the situation a little bit nice and dry um let's paint it to the side at footpath to the side if you're not sure what i'm talking about and say to the side google it let's bring that round here clean that brush really well give it a bit of a wipe on the old kitchen paper and then we'll use water to blend it now in watercolor painting the white paper is the highlights so the water shows more of the white so therefore you get lighter colors beautiful nice so it's it's really rewarding how you can blend paint in it and we've kind of created a bit of a footpath coming around the corner here more shadows are going to come I am going to move into a different brush at this point and the brush I'm going to use now is this one here which is actually it's a detail brush but it's actually called a Matthew Palmer branching detail brush it 
it basically allows you to create nice sort of sharp areas of sort of detail it's a rigger brush on steroids see what i mean it's got this nice kind of beefed up area around its base i know the feeling there it is and what we'll do here is we'll add some shadows shining through shining through the woodland here so let's just pop that to one side your light's coming in from this side if you only want to keep saying where's your light coming from because i spend a lot of time used to spend a lot of time on the road demonstrating art groups and various things and one of the common things that people always used to say to me was where's your light coming from the other one is, did you wet it first? That's what I want to call my autobiography. Did you wet it first? So imagine these are cast shadows. Casting across the landscape. Branches of the tree. The light coming through. Penetrating the woodland. That's a good word, isn't it? Penetrating, eh? We like that one. It's filth, this demo, isn't it? You've, it's a good job you're not paid for it. It's a good job it's free. Pop the branches in, little flicks. I see them in concert, little flicks. So is that little make over here as well? Bring it round like an episode of Carry On Camping. This Sid James is going to creep in at any minute. little little flicks in but it starts to create that sort of illusion of light now we are going to be adding um some detail to this folks obviously this is just the next stage in the demo got about 10 minutes left on this which is great i want to use the blending blade here a bit of water lightly sort of skimming over this and what this will do is it'll calm down the shadows which is exactly what cliff richard had to do up a little bit of a tonal work just just kind of beds it in a bit don't it's so sort of calm it softens it blends it helps it to helps it to ease into the picture a little bit just a touch a slither a slither that's another good word slither okay beautiful now we used the tree and texture brushes earlier on got the three different sizes here there is a big one as well there always is small medium and large using the small one because i've thrown the large one on the floor we're going to go for detail we're going to go for detail down to palette we're going to mix a good old dark color from natural brown and we've kind of got it anyway because it mixed from creating the trees we've got the brown we've got some orange in there we've got some gray in there as well beautiful good bit of darkness good bit of darkness uh, dry brush which is basically the opposite of a wet brush taking the paint away and we're going to use this we're going to use this to add some dry brush to the landscape we've got another five thumbs down i reckon we can get 100 likes out of this video i reckon we can do it i think we can do it let's get a bit closer in folks to this bottom section here let's go for some dry brush work let's darken the edge the last sort of five or six minutes of the demo here let's add some nice sh shadows and I'm making use of the paper here i'm making use of the textured paper because it's got a beautiful size but you can darken the edge you see um imagine it's where the dog's been Making use of the beautiful textured paper that we're working on. And not surface paper means it's got like a middle grain surface. Let's put some skid marks on. What? Put some skid marks going around the corner. Tire tracks is what I kind of probably mean actually, rather than skid marks. But we'll bring that in. Who says that a snow scene has to be cold? This is a beautiful, it's got that sort of late autumn feel into it few tire tracks in the snow that kind of thing 
and I'm using the small texture brush to do this with. But any brush with a little amount of paint on would do that for you. And it makes like a lovely effect. You can sort of see where everything's gone a bit, you know, textured. And even here where the trees meet the wood, I want to do some dry brush lines down here as well. Bring it in, texturize it. Over that side, it just adds interest. I've got a piece of paper here. Just thought I'd tell you that. With a rough edge. Using the tree brush. I want to get a bit close in for the last few minutes, folks, on this. Let's get a bit closer in here so you can see that detail. And we're going to use this rough edge to actually stipple some little bushes. Some winter foliage. How nice that is. Just adds clarity, adds detail. Can we get closer in? Yeah, why not? Sod the expense. We can do this. We can do this. Pop that there. Isn't that nice? That little bit of, you know, whatever. Little bit of whatever goes a long way in a picture. Down here, I think, as well, actually, it'd be quite nice on the edge of the footpath. Now, if you're thinking this is too quick for me to paint, remember the virtual workshops aren't quick. You get time. You get time to paint. If you can't do it live, you can join in at any time, or you can watch it back at any time because once you've purchased a workshop, it's yours to keep forever and a day. Pop some little bits, little tiny bits of sort of bushes and little shrubs and things just creeping in. So a very quick watercolour, but I'm sure if you'd painted this yourself, I hope you'd be happy with what you've done. I hope you've been happy watching what we've done today as well. It's better than watching the news, that's for sure. Um, hopefully it's better than watching the news. Hopefully it's better than watching the news. But that's lovely, that, that little bit of extra texture. We're loving that detail we've created there. Let's grab the branch and detail brush. This one here, with the same colour I've just been using. We're just about, we're almost there. We've got a couple of minutes, couple of minutes left, and we've maxed out on this 30 minute painting time. So we're almost there, almost there. Let's just add some little flicks of grass poking out the snow here. Just a little tiny little little branches and little flicks again over here as well look. I think we could bring some of those in some little there's always a few little branches poking out the snow isn't they on these winter these winter scenes I'll put some shadows on these to finish off in a second so we're probably about there on the 30 minutes now, but we're just going to do a little bit of extra. Stick around if you want, or you can go and put the news on. It's up to you. It's your call, really. Totally up to you. So I'm just, again, using this detail brushing. The good thing about these is they do hold a lot of... lot of paint so if I was to paint in just to give a bit of scale to the picture here painting some little branches and um, sorry fence posts actually and a little gateway used to be a safe way at one point or was it a co-op but a little gate little gate and a couple of bearded chuffs in the sky just to give a bit of bit of interest in Titivate, another good word. Another good word. Just around here, look, a little bit of added sharpness here and there on this edge. Really looks good on the edge. It really gives a nice bit of detail to it and nice bit of texturization. Another good word. Is that even a real word, texturization? Sounds good. I'm pottering. I'm 
and I'm sort of scuffing the edge of the paper which is just enough to give that nice bit of interest and what I want to do now folks is I want to get close in now this might seem like a, a odd thing to do but I want to put some shadows from your grasses yeah but where's your light coming from let's get some little flicks coming from these these grasses and it's a weird thing but it just sort of lifts them up don't it it adds a bit of shadow um, I would do a similar thing over here as well. Just pop some little shadows coming out from these, these little bits of little bits of branches and little little twigs and things. It just sort of helps them to sit slightly clearer in the picture. Now, if you was to say that the trackway on this watercolor is a little bit on the frosty side, how would you make it look frosty? Well, we could use the dry brush technique again and we could actually add some downward drops can you see these lines these downward lines I'm applying to the picture here these are very much very light skid, skid marks but what it does it creates an illusion of reflection as though it's frosty it's got that nice kind of atmosphere going to it and that to me is really what this thing is all about but if you go in from this nice kind of fence post this gateway at the back which is very tiny that's that's no more than a quarter of an inch um wide and then we zoom back on the picture here you can see those downward lines you can see those grasses in the foreground and for a quick watercolor picture it really does make a difference and I always think I'm always a big fan of this I always think you can't beat a good mount okay so we've got here see what a difference I'm going to put this on it's a bevel mount basically and it does make quite a difference to the picture pop that on there pop that on there son there you go beautiful beautiful and press it down and that has given us i think a very pleasing late autumn early winter watercolor a nice warm scene to say it's a snow scene but that's all part of the fun and that was live that was live which is a great buzz if you never painted live you should do it you should do it there you go folks thank you for taking time out to watch that that quick 30 minute demo um we it kind of was about 33 minutes ish give or take but that's fine Who, who's counting not me anyway but anyway thank you for watching please do consider taking part in a live virtual watercolor workshop the one that's coming up at the current week that you're watching this whether it's 2021 or 2022 will be on this website here watercolor tv link in the description but the one that's coming up live is i'm studying now on the 16th of september 21 is the 19th and it is this painting here it's going to be a beautiful autumnal woodland with flowing stream it's a 10 pound workshop you can watch it live or you can watch it back at your leisure it's yours to keep forever folks do check it out three colors three brushes is all you need there's a link in the description thank you for watching thank you for keeping the paint flowing because that's very important in life and i will see you next time for more watercolor painting and don't forget to subscribe as well